LSU clearly the better team from start to finish. We will go up to uh, Indianapolis here in a couple of minutes as uh, we will uh, talk to uh, Tasman Mitchell, who was the uh, uh, obviously the assistant basketball coach uh, at LSU on the bench uh, for the Tigers today. Uh, our special uh, broadcast this afternoon brought to you by our great sponsors, Go Chevrolet, Angel Oak Home Mortgage, as uh, you can get in touch with me for a, uh, a brand new home if you want to get into a new home, if you want to get into a... Uh, uh, a second home, if you want to get into an investment property, uh, if you're looking to do that, get in touch with me, Jordy at JordyColadaShow.com. But LSU basketball rolled today. I think we talked about this. Uh, Lizzie's back there. Yeah, uh, yeah. As uh, we talked about this on the buildup, um, they're not going to get any calls. It was obviously clear that the, te- the technical foul of Javante Smart could go down as the worst call of the tournament. Can't talk out there. I mean, he's he, he lets out a after a a sluggish offensive start for LSU where they just could not uh, get moving. Um, finally, Javante hits a three-pointer and lets out a little bit of emotion and gets teed up. In the second half, Trenton Watford misses a shot. He's trying to get back down the floor, steps over one of the Bonnies. That guy takes a swing at Watford as he's walking back down the court in front of the referee and it doesn't get any whistle. I'm not here to complain about the referees. I'm just proving the point. If LSU gets this thing, they're going against much more than the opponent on the floor. They're going against the referees and the NCAA as uh, LSU rolls in the first round. And I just watched Clark Kellogg in the postgame ra- uh, matchup where he said LSU-Michigan, he doesn't know who to pick. And it's going to be a tough ch- a choice for him because of the way that LSU played it. LSU had three players in double-double. Three players. Three double-double players today. Um, I, that that sounded awkward. That sounded weird. It's not how it's supposed to be. Safe. Three players with a double double. They had three players with a double double. That's exactly right. Um, in and out, hit us up. Yep. Uh, give a little bit. Let me, let me fix this sign on Angelo. What do you think about the game? Oh my goodness, dude. Uh, obviously started slow, and as you said, I think LSU is a bit of a marked man. Like yeah. you could kind of tell, if, whether it be from the booth or from the, the way the game was officiated, there was a lot to. If you dive in, if you watch the Tigers all year, you could kind of see that these are calls that are made in college basketball. Every game, we didn't get those. I'm not like you said. We get a double digit win. Not here to complain about it. I thought um, after a slow start, the Tigers kind of found their groove. Got Trent Wadford involved instead of hanging around the three point line. We got into our offense that actually works. You know, it's fun to see us play a little defense too. Yep, um, I was very impressed with uh, with their big guy Osuni uh, as uh, he had 15 points on the day. Uh, Holmes had 18 as he got going uh, from uh, from from deep. Or uh, who was that that kept hitting the three pointers? Welch uh, hit, hit hit a couple of three pointers. But for LSU on the day, uh, Trenton Watford had 11 and 11, 11 points, 11 boards. Uh, Darius Days had 13 points, 11 boards, and Andre Hyatt had 13 points and 10 boards on the afternoon. So not most uh, valuable player, but most important player. Well, Hyatt, yeah. Oh man, did all the dirty work. Was doing everything. You need I mean, everything one guy to do that. Low. Yes, it was. It was. Uh, it was it was a, a strong performance by Hyatt, uh, and I mean you had Watford and Smart in early foul trouble, and I thought it was a it was a nice uh, coaching move by Wade sticking with them in the first half because both of those second fouls came very early in the first half, um, and to get those guys back out on the floor at the end of the first half I thought was pretty key. So uh, it sets up LSU Michigan. On uh, on Monday, we're going to go up to Indianapolis here in a couple of minutes and talk to Tasman Mitchell as he is. Uh, we're going to wait for Coach Wade to do his network responsibilities, and then we'll talk to Tasman for a couple of minutes as uh, LSU winners today. Uh, I thought the bench minutes today were pretty quality. Uh, when you look at what Mawani uh, Wilkinson and Josh LeBlanc were uh, were able to do, uh, Wilkinson had a couple of good defensive possessions. Uh, didn't do a lot offensively, uh, but I thought that the quality of play was pretty good when you got to that part of the. The, the, the roster, but uh, look, man, this is where the superstars have to be superstars, and Cam Thomas is a superstar, and on the brightest and, and, and biggest stage, uh, he was huge today. That's the best game I've seen him play all season. I would agree, and you know what's most impressive about him is he's done this throughout the year. When his shot's not going in, he consistently finds a way to get to the free throw line. He knows how to affect the game in different ways, and we were talking about this, we were watching. His passing is underrated. Dude. Very much so. Very much so. I mean, he... he he demands so much attention as a scorer that you forget about him. Especially, you know, one thing that 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 I don't think we, I guess we have talked about it a little bit more. But 
his ability to play off the dribble. Everybody kind of considers him just a a, a stand up shooter, a nice uh, guy, a screen type shooter where you got to run him off screens and let him kind of set his feet and shoot. He plays really well off the dribble. I mean, a couple of those finishes at the rim where he is, you know, playing off the bounce is very impressive. And with that comes a lot of attention that defenses provide him. And he sucked up. I mean, that drop off he provided. I mean, he dropped into Watford was beautiful. Where he su- I mean, he sucked up three guys, just dropped it to him, easy layup. Um, I, I thought LSU looked very comfortable today. Yeah, it, obviously the beginning was it's like a feel it out period almost when you have. I mean, they've seen the scouting report. They know how the Bonnies are going to play defense. They're just trying to get a feel for it. Everybody was pushing for them to push the ball. It's like, just give them a second. They're getting yeah. to feel it out, see how they set up. And then once you get comfortable in a setting like that, new gym, all those things come into account the, in March Madness. So once they got comfortable, and I think, I mean, it was the writing was on the wall at, after like the five-minute mark. We were, they were out, the Bonnies were outclassed. Yeah. Well, I mean, some of those defensive stops, some of those rebounds when they were getting out and running, I mean, you could clearly tell that LSU is the better team. Right now at halftime, Michigan is leading Johnny Jones in Texas Southern 42-24. This is going to set up a matchup uh, for LSU and uh, the number one seed out of this bracket in the Michigan Wolverines as uh, that will be a matchup on Sunday night, or excuse me, on Monday night. Uh, Hunter Dickinson right now, who's one of the top freshmen. This will be a showdown between two of the top freshmen in the country when you talk about Cameron Thomas and Hunter Dickinson uh, up at Michigan. He's got eight points on the afternoon he's three of three from the field already so he's perfect from uh from from the field in this game uh but yes today lsu my game ball or or my player of the game would absolutely go to andre hyatt i mean the the the, the minutes that he gave you today uh was just enormous i mean they, they needed somebody else for as good as the superstars played they needed somebody else to step up and hyatt gave him a double double uh with the 13 and 10 and some of the offensive rebounds uh, that he grabbed on the afternoon were enormous, huge. Uh, he's got to work on his finishing a little bit. A little shell shot I mean, from he, the he, Alabama. He probably Alabama left. He probably money. left six points out there. I mean, he were calling for his head for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Jordy runs emotional during these games. I'm starting to learn. The man runs hot. I can't believe he coaches. <laughs> <laughs> but hi, it was great this it afternoon, was, man. And dude, I don't even need the 13. I'm happy with yeah. the 10. Yeah. That, that that's what going forward. We've talked about this throughout the year. It's the rebounding that's going to kill us, and he provide. He was a stalwart down there. Yeah, grabbed everything that you needed him to grab. Obviously, and if we're going to dominate the boards like that, that brings a different element to LSU. Absolutely, no, no doubt about it. I mean, uh, if if you've got to account for him, uh, I mean that's a that's a deep scouting report that you're running from the the the, the other side. I mean, Javante, you know you're going to have to account for Darius Days again. We talked about that going into the matchup. I mean. You knew that at you know the, the the way that he struggled offensively the last time out uh, was not going to be the norm. He's just too talented of a player. Today, five of ten from the uh, from the field, fifty uh, percent from three point land. As he was three for six there, hit some big ones. Uh, had eleven rebounds, three of them on the offensive glass. Uh, had thirteen points, no turnovers, a block, an assist. I mean, a good looking stat line for Darius Days, who struggled in that SEC championship game, and people were wondering how that was going to carry over, and it didn't. I mean, that kind of washed away, and, um, you know, it's 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 that's kind of who he is today. Um, Dubois, Staten Dubois says the length at the guard position will cause a huge problem for Michigan. I I, I think this is a nightmare. Nobody wants to play LSU right now. Yeah, I, I, and this is what we were talking about. I, the the seeding might have done a disservice to the tournament almost. Yeah. It kind of flipped its on its ear. Yeah. Well, I think that that had to be a discussion behind, you know, within the committee of, look, we're going to screw LSU. We're going to try to screw LSU as hard as we can. But if they break out of this bracket, they're going to screw us. Right. I you mean, know what I mean? We're, like, we're doing what we said we're going to do. But it, if they get hot, I mean, they're going to win by 20. I don't know what's going to happen, you know what I mean? Because they've got potential to go on a run here. I mean, we try to put Javante in foul trouble. We tried to put I Trenton mean, they, in they've foul done trouble. everything they can to try to get him out of here. Uh, but Not leaving. It, no, they're not going anywhere, man. I, and look, man, Wade looked comfortable in that game. Um, he looked relaxed. He did. I'm telling he you, did. the bubble suits this man. He did. Um, Seventeen thousand is the is the capacity assembly hall. They had, had twenty five hundred people there. What a shame! What a shame! I, that I wish, place is on top of you too. It yeah. would have been absolutely electric to have the crowd kind of breathing down your neck. I mean, that's that's college basketball, but that's okay. We'll take the dub. 500 fans were in there. Uh, yeah, I can't wait to see Monday. 
Uh, we're trying to link up with Tasman Mitchell here for a couple of minutes, and then we'll, uh, we'll we'll get out of here. We just wanted to get some content to you today uh, as LSU rolls, and they set up a Monday night matchup versus Michigan. We'll have a ton to talk about on the show on Monday. Really looking forward to really breaking that game down uh, on uh, on Monday. So uh, we'll have some fun talking about that going into, uh, into Monday's matchup in Indiana uh, between the number one seed in this region. The Michigan Wolverines and uh, and LSU, who's the eight seed and a scary, scary eight seed uh, for the rest of the tournament. If if you were watching them today, they w- w- when I mentioned just pro- playing relaxed, they were just playing very loose. Which, you know, you get a you get a group of, of of players like this together, like LSU has, and at times throughout the season, they have looked very individualized. Right? I mean, you've wondered like who's who, who's who's Trenton Watford playing for? Who's Javante Smart? What's 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 he really in it for? Is this a team concept, or, if, or is people just playing to try and improve their draft stock, or just trying to play for draft stock at, at all? Um, and and right now it looks like all that stuff is out the window. Like it doesn't, matter, it doesn't look like any of that stuff matters. And they're they're, they're playing collectively, which you know that's got to scare a lot of people because you you see potentially you know what they could be. Uh, when they're right and when they get out and they're running and and defensively they've been different over the last month that's been the difference I mean they they have they have made a commitment to the defensive end of the floor that is paying off I mean their their offense a lot of that is starting on defense you ready yep let's go up to uh Indy let's go up to Indy here as uh, we will link up with uh Tasman Mitchell. The assistant hey. coach, dude, the bench looks great. We're live. How are you, bro? I'm good, man. How you doing? Uh, I mean, not as good as y'all. Seventy six, sixty one, y'all roll. The bench looked awesome. Everybody looked engaged. Right now, y'all look like one of the scariest teams in the tournament. How confident are y'all leaving the gym today? Oh man, we just absorbing this win right here, man. It was a great win against a great team, man. Uh, you know, we're real confident, man. You know, we want to take one game at a time and bring on whoever's next for us. You know how we do it. <laughs> Tell me what you think about Andre Hyatt's performance today. Oh um, man, he was excellent, man. He played tremendous, man. Brought energy, rebounded, man. He defended, man. He had four, five, four or five blocks, the blocks on the perimeter. You know what I'm saying? So you know they're 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 they're, they're a major shooting team, and, and 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 we needed him to do that. So uh, that was awesome. Sorry, Will Wade told us a couple of weeks ago, he said, when our season comes to an end, whenever that happens, if we get into the postseason and we get into a win-or-die situation, if we don't win the game, we're going to get crushed on the glass. It looks like you guys have been putting an emphasis on that as you out-rebounded the Bonnies today by 19. Um, what do you guys as a coaching staff see when you see that stat? Oh, man, it's, you, hey, we, hey, we love it, man. We know, what, we know our capabilities. We can't say we can't do it. You know what I'm saying? All it takes is just... It's just it's your will and power and sense of urgency, man. And uh, that's what we had, man. And that, that's what the guys wanted to do. They knew what we needed to do. Like I say, man, it's not it's not regular league play. You know what I'm saying? It's not, it's not like we'll worry about the next game. We'll worry about the next game after that. Nah, it's right now. So they, they boggle down, man, and know what they got to do. Cam Thomas, 27 today. How strong was the freshman's effort? Oh, man, the freshman effort was amazing, man. But you know what also he did, man, at the present, man, he distributed the ball, yes. which, was, yes. which was awesome, man. And, and, and that makes it even more dangerous. You know, having him, man, is a special gift, man. You know, he's an amazing kid, man. And, you know, I mean, like I say, man, he, he shared the ball real well. And that was amazing for us, man. Uh, you, you seem like on the coaching staff, you're, you're probably closer to these guys. They kind of come to you when they come off the, the floor and look for guidance. Um, wh- where are they mentally right now? It looks like you guys are in a really good mental spot. I mean, they locked in, man. You know, um, all I tell them, man, be a star in your role, man. Whether you're coming off the bench, whether you're a starter, be a star in your role. What we call whatever you call in the game to do, let's do it. I don't want to have no excuses, no nothing. Um, you know, and like I say, listen to the message, not the delivery. And let's let's take it one game at a time. It's not about it's not about you. It's about us. Have y'all begun? So I'm sorry. Ha, ha, have y'all begun to scout Michigan? Oh no, not yet, man. We're absorbing this win right now, man. We're about to, as soon as we as soon as we get back to the hotel, we will. You know, short term memory right now, man. It's NCAA tournament, short term memory. What do you tell the players about your experience in this tournament about competing? How, how, I know it's a different one with the with with COVID and with what's going on with you guys at the hotel. But what do you tell them about your experience in this tournament? And how it can carry over to help them? Oh man, I just tell them, man, uh, play together, man. You got to do this. You can't do this with I. You got to do this with us. And um, you know, one game at a time. Whether it's COVID or not, you still got that little round pill that called basketball. You still got five teammates you got to play with. So it doesn't matter. That's, that's all you need. That's all you need to play back to play the game of basketball. 
So uh, that's why I tell them, man, just one game at a time, man. Everybody back home is buzzing, man. Uh, pulling for you guys, and uh, the the longer y'all don't come home, is better for everybody. Y'all stay up there and and bring this thing back. Uh, y'all look great today. Thank you for a couple of minutes today, Taz. All right, man. Thank you, Jordy. I appreciate you, man. Thank you for having me. Always, man. Always. There's Taz you, Taz and Mitchell checking in from Indiana today. He's as uh, <laughs> I can't be. I mean, yeah, dude, this is the best time of the year. This is the best time of the year. I'm telling you, you will always remember where you were watching this St. Bonnie's game if LSU gets on a run. I mean, I, I, I mean, think about 2006. That's what I was Think about say. everything. I, yeah, I remember the shot with LSU, Texas A&M, AC Law out there. I remember everything. exactly where I was, yeah. Ty, Tyrus on the swats on Sheldon uh, in, in, in the Duke game. I, I remember uh, Daryl Mitchell throwing Tyrus Thomas the alley-oop over, uh, uh, over uh, LaMarcus Aldridge in that Texas game. Texas, yeah. Uh, I mean, just everything about this time of the year – when you got a dog in the hunt, is is as good as it gets. And LSU with a seventy six sixty one win today look like they are a, uh, a a ferocious dog in this hunt, and, and they look like a scary one. Uh, if you are uh, if you're somebody like Michigan who has to play them next, that sets up a tilt versus Michigan right now. Michigan's at the half, but it looks like they're going to control this game and uh, and be able to close it out as uh, they're back in action and just starting the second quarter, but. 48-26 lead right now over Johnny Jones and Texas Southern. So Michigan, LSU on Monday night. That was Tasman Mitchell checking in. If you missed it, remember you can go back and check out this content. This is brought to you by Angel Oak. Uh, I appreciate everybody on the, uh, on, the, on the bracket challenge just winging it. Uh, the bracket challenge, so much interaction. Uh, I don't know if we have any more brackets. And that spark Can't might be, be. parked. Yeah, bro. <laughs> Throw the park and break in. The old ghost spark ain't going to work out. Uh, Lee Carney called me after uh, after after the Oral Roberts game and said we should have done a Corvette. I said, yeah, I bet so. <laughs> I bet so. Got ten of them. Um, so shout out to everybody out there. LSU rolls. Have a great rest of the weekend. Uh, tell everybody about the Jordy Colada show. We'll be back with you on Sunday on uh, Monday morning, oh. uh, Monday seven a.m. As uh, we'll do something for the Tigers on Monday night. Got to. I hope it's on a late tip. I mean, you're I, to, I mean, we, I'll help you out there yeah. if we have to do that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Lizzie. <laughs> uh, have a great rest of your Saturday. Tigers roll. Talk to you on Monday morning.